This is Brad with Shipping Easy. I'm going to give it another two minutes uh, and let everybody um, enter the uh, the webinar. We've got a lot of people showing up today, so I'll just check back in here um, in just a second, and we'll get things going. Okay, everybody. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and get started today. Uh, my name is Brad Pendleton. I work at Shipping Easy. I have worked for the company for five years now, um, and I've worked in sales and uh, support and onboarding. Um, I've worked with the product team, just kind of all over the place, um, generally working with our customers on a day-to-day -day basis, improving processes and, and keeping everything streamlined. So thanks for joining us. Uh, well, it's really just me and my dog, I guess, since we're all working from home these days. Um, but thanks for joining Charlie and I. We're gonna show you how to use the um, the Shipping Easy application from the orders page. It's not gonna to be too complicated. We're not gonna to go too in depth into um, uh, all the automation and great features that Shipping Easy has. Really, this is just a, a real base training for uh, processing orders um, at a very rudimentary level and very uh, entry level. Um, a lot of people that sign up for these webinars are brand new to our software. So there's a lot it can do, but we obviously want to keep it pretty straightforward um, just starting out. A couple of things we're going to cover. Shipping Easy's orders page. Obviously, that's where all of your orders are going to be. So I'll show you how you can ship some packages from there and process your orders, how it's um, laid out, how you can organize it and things like that. Um, I'll touch on some e-commerce industry tips that I've noticed in my time with Shipping Easy. We'll just briefly go over some uh, strategy, if you will, if you're new to shipping or trying to formulate, well, what's the best way to ship my packages? I'll give you some pointers on things to look out for and, and kind of brainstorm some ideas. And then at the very end, I'm going to open it up for questions. Um, so you can ask any question you want, what my favorite ice cream is, uh, how do you ship a package to Canada, um, do you integrate with this carrier? It's it's totally fair game there. I'm happy to, to field any questions and, and as many uh, as come in. Um, but we'll go ahead and uh, get started on just the e-commerce part first um, and kind of give you just a, a quick background and lay of the land if you're unfamiliar. Um, some things that are just good general rules of thumb when it comes to shipping strategy is there's a lot of different ways you can ship your packages. Um, and the first way you'll want to consider is the weight of your package. Uh, typically, 
the United States Postal Service, uh, this guy with the, uh, the eagle here, he is um, going to be your best carrier option when it comes to shipping lighter weight packages. So what I mean by lighter weight is anything typically under 8 to 10 pounds. The post office is really competitive and really cost effective. Um, they definitely own the market on anything that's under a pound. That's known as first class mail. So if you have something that weighs uh, zero ounces all the way up to 15.99 ounces, the post office is definitely going to be your best bet for those uh, lighter weight products. When you get heavier products, uh, like think of dumbbells or um, uh, furniture or anything just like really big and bulky and heavy, UPS and FedEx are going to be um, uh, carriers that you want to evaluate for those types of products. If you're just starting out as an e-commerce seller or just kind of getting familiar with um, the lay of the land, uh, I definitely encourage you to diversify the different platforms that you sell on. Um, a lot of customers will start out with like a Shopify store, and that's really great because it allows you to customize your brand, uh, get all your marketing in place, and really just double down on what your business is about. The only downside is obviously is that it's a brand new company, so it, it obviously doesn't have that right off the bat buzz that um, established companies do have. I always invite customers to look at both a website of their own and a marketplace, Amazon obviously being the largest. Uh, is a really good option for that. You lose the customization of your branded website. Amazon pretty much takes itself as a brand for you, but it also opens you up to a whole bunch of other customers you might not have instantaneous access to. So you can use both of them uh, in tangent. Maybe you list a couple of item on, items on Amazon and it gets people interested in, enough to research, well, who is this uh, uh, guy that's selling these, these cupcakes or um, these cufflinks that I really like? Well, there's a larger selection at the store. Suddenly, you're going to see more traffic shift that way. There's a couple of different strategies you can do um, relating to that, but it's just like your investment portfolio. Diversify your listing portfolio. And then the last thing is try and condense as many back-end processes for order fulfillment into one software uh, as early as possible. That gets, and what I mean by that is a, a software like Shipping Easy. When we started five years ago, when I first came on board, we were just a shipping software. So we integrated with Shopify, we integrated with Amazon, um, and we were able to do a really good job of shipping, but we have since breached out into, um, branched out into inventory and customer marketing. So these are the back-end processes that can be automated that have to do with your order fulfillment. So you can cover your shipping, you can manage your inventory, and you can send out emails all automatically from one place. The reason that's really advantageous to get set up early is because as your business grows, well, if you only have a shipping software and you go from shipping five packages a day to 50 packages a day, well, now you have to start tracking that inventory even closer. Well, that means you have to look for another program to do that. And that program obviously has to work with your shipping software and your website. So you have to keep these different things in mind when evaluating it. If something goes wrong, that's another phone call that you have to make in addition to your shipping software and your website to try and get everything to play nice. The nice thing about shipping easy is that we condense all of that into one spot for you. So no matter what, if it's a back-end process that's related to your order fulfillment, all you have to do is make one phone call versus three or four. So that's something to, to know is that the business really scales, our software really scales well with your business um, because it's able to take all of these things that otherwise would be uh, disparate uh, and condense them all into one. So I'm gonna jump out of here. We're going to go ahead and get into the application. This is the Shipping Easy Orders page. If you're unfamiliar with it, how you get here is you log into Shipping Easy and it drops you automatically, or you can click on that Orders tab in the top. This is where all of your orders will land if you are integrated um, into the software. So if you sell on Amazon and I place an order on your Amazon store, you will see Brad Pendleton from Austin, Texas, placed a store on my or placed an order on my Amazon store right here, and you can go about processing that. The same goes for your website, Shopify, or another platform, eBay, Etsy, WooCommerce. If we have an integration with your website or your order uh, processor, we can pull that information in here directly. If you don't sell online, no big deal. I would say we have over 10,000 customers that don't have an online presence. There's just not a, a, a need for it. Um, they're able to utilize us either by using the quick ship function, which is strictly a manual order, super easy. Just has all the information here. If they have an address book, maybe they can put in their name. 
Brad, well, my name's not in there yet. I haven't thought for myself. Fills out here, puts in a new weight, five, and then they go about creating the order. That's a strictly manual order. If maybe you have sales reps that are on the road or going to trade shows that are taking in hundreds of orders, all you have to do is a CSV upload. And that's just right here with the um, upload orders. It's very simple. It's just an Excel spreadsheet that has your customer information and you upload it all at once into shipping easy so that you can go about processing them. After the orders have landed on this page, there's a couple of different ways you can sort and filter to the orders specifically to see how you would like to go about um, processing them. We'll start with these columns here at the top. These are all pieces of information uh, about the orders specifically, and you can sort by the columns. None of them are permanent. You can customize this to however you'd like. So maybe uh, the item name isn't that important to me uh, when I'm processing orders. So I can actually remove that by clicking Arrange Columns, pull off the item name, and put something more pertinent. Maybe I do very customizable things. So I have customer comment or a gift message. I can save that. And as you can see, my gift message column is right here. And then if I want to get rid of that, I can at a later time. Um, but we can always sort by any of these columns just by checking it and having it filter either by uh, alphanumerically on the order number, or we can go by the date from ascending or descending. In conjunction with your shipping columns, you also have the filters, which are really great for being super specific um, for your orders. Maybe I only want to work on my Amazon store orders. Well, I can filter to that. And maybe I only want to work on my Amazon store orders that are um, less than an hour old. Obviously, we want to keep Amazon very happy, so we can combine these different filters together, an hour, less than an hour old and under a pound. I'm not returning any results because I don't have any test orders in my Amazon store at the moment. But let's see if we have one that's um, all and we'll say our Shopify store. So as you can see, this is every order that came from my Shopify store that's under a pound. I have five orders here versus the couple hundred or, or hundred plus that I had uh, when I unfiltered. The nice thing about these filters too is they're sticky. So maybe as I'm processing this, somebody calls me and says, hey Brad, I never got my package. Can you check and see where it's at for me? Did you guys print it? Well, I can jump over to shipment history, which is under the shipments tab, See, oh yeah, we sent it out, it's on its way, um, and give that guy the tracking information. Jump back to the orders page, and as you can see, I'm still stuck on these filters, so I can pick right, pick up right where I left off. And then I can just reset them if I wanna start somewhere else. But the orders, uh, the filter, order filters are really great for breaking down orders and uh, basically tackling cohorts of orders as they come in. For the actual processing of shipping orders, all you have to do on this page is you could just click buy label if you're happy with the quote that you see. If there's no other adjustments or anything like that you need to do on the actual shipment, you can always just click the buy label button. Um, a lot of people set up shipping rules that automatically assign um, different types of uh, carrier services um, and packaging to their orders. So all they have to do is either click that or they can highlight everybody that has a uh, rate quote returned and just buy those labels right out, right? Um, so that's easy enough. If you do need to do some work or you just wanna go through it one at a time, and just be very thorough, all you do is click on the order, pops open this order slide out here on the right-hand side. This contains all of the details that I need to ship the package. We have the items included in the order, the recipient's address, any notes they may have left, left and then any uh, sort of um, uh, shipping rules that I have applied to it as well. Again, we're not gonna to get too far into the actual automation features, but any information or any sort of adjustments that have been applied to the order, they're displayed here on the actual order slide out. So let's suppose that these two items uh, have an incorrect weight. It's saying they're 7.53 pounds, and I know that's not actually how much they weigh. These things actually weigh closer to about uh, one and a half pounds. All I need to do is just update my weight. So one pound, eight ounces, and then um, I know if I ship it over a pound, as I mentioned earlier, you can ship first class up to 15.99 ounces. So this is going to be over it. So we're going to have to use priority mail. And I have a 777 priority mail package that I like. 
So I can just click this shipping solution, select that 777 package, update the rate, and I have a new rate of $8.71. Um, this label is ready to go. We like the address, uh, all of the items are in stock, um, and whatever other details are around it are complete. So we'll click Buy Label. And now, as you can see, the order slide-out has disappeared, and that order has been removed from the orders page. This is going to the shipment history page. This is a log of all of these shipments uh, that I have created in a specified date range. Um, as you can see, here's the most recent one I've created with its tracking information uh, and its order status. Currently, you see this clock. The clock indicates when it is gray that it has not been scanned into the United States Postal Service. If this package gets scanned into uh, USPS either at the end of the day or on like a scan form or you drop it off with them, uh, this clock will then turn green. Once it's been delivered, the clock will turn into an actual check mark indicating that the package was successfully delivered. If there are any questions as far as, well, how do I track it or where does this tracking information come from or go, the tracking number is always right here that you can click to that will lead you to our branded tracking page um, that shows you what's going on. This obviously goes through the stages of delivery. Right now it's just ready to go, implying that it hasn't been picked up, but you'll see that as it says in transit and then delivered. It shows you all sorts of uh, cool little um, uh, images here as well of the actual things. Your customers, and this is a really nice part about it too, is that as soon as you print the shipping label from Shipping Easy, your customers actually get an email from us with this tracking information on it. So if you have branded tracking set up on Shipping Easy, well, if I sent this to one of my customers, they would receive an email and as soon as they click on that tracking link, they would see uh, their customized, your customized portal. And a lot of our customers take advantage of using this to uh, entice their customers to um, uh, take a look at other things as well in their software. And it just adds to the overall experience. It's part of that personalization touch uh, that I mentioned at the beginning of this webinar. So that is the life cycle of shipping an order um, uh, from Shipping Easy and it coming to the shipment history page. Now, let's suppose that I need to do some sort of edit or I need to cancel this order for whatever reason. Maybe my customer says, hey, I'm going to get something else. Can you just cancel the one that, that I placed earlier today? No big deal. All you have to do is come to the right-hand side of this um, uh, shipment history page, click on that green box and cancel the shipment. So long as this order hasn't entered the mail stream, it's free to be canceled. Um, that money that was spent on the label itself gets refunded back to the card uh, from which it was drawn on. If we need to make some sort of adjustment, maybe this person wants to um, have it sent to a different address, you can just duplicate the shipment, which brings it to the page, ready to ship. And as you can see, this is just our shipping information. But duplicating the shipment, I can come in here, edit this address, update it, and then reprint that label again so that it's ready to go. The last thing I'll show you on the um, uh, shipment history page, on the left-hand side, we have a bunch of filters, much like the filters on the orders page of Shipping Easy. So if you need to go back, maybe you processed a big batch of orders and we need to find them, well, we have batch ID you can search by, you can filter by these stores, you can say uh, any specific date ranges. If you need to find an order, and this is very important to keep in mind, if you need to find an order that goes beyond 90 days, we still have access to that order information, but on this page, we only go back 90 days. Anything beyond that, you'll just want to generate a quick report inside of Shipping Easy on our reports tab. Um, but yeah, that's that's the Shipping Easy um, shipment history page. And I guess this is the final thing on this page is our scan form. So a United States Postal scan form, if you're unfamiliar, basically takes all of your shipments for the day and condenses all of their barcodes into a single one. So this is really beneficial if you have like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten packages that are going to go with the post office. Um, what they like is to create one of these, and it'll, like I said, it'll just take all of the individual scan forms per package and just give condense it into one. So that way, the post office doesn't have to scan uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different packages. They can just scan a single barcode, which includes all of those packages, and gets them into the mail stream uh, effectively and efficiently. But that's it. That's that's essentially um, what I really just wanted to cover today. It's a like I said, it's a really straightforward process as far as integrating your website into Shipping Easy. 
uh, downloading these orders, and then it's just a matter of clicking on the orders themselves, selecting what method you'd like to ship them through, whether it's your own UPS or your own FedEx rates um, or the United States postal rates, um, and then buying the label and, and going about your day. So um, yeah, I'll go ahead and just open it up to questions. That's like I said, that's really all I wanted to cover. I wanted to keep it pretty pretty straightforward. Um, but if anybody wants to go into anything um, deeper or, or needs a better explanation, yeah, feel free to, to let me know. Oops, pull questions out here. So someone's asking, uh, do we support Shopify multiple locations? That's a great question. So for anybody that has a Shopify store um, or is unaware of what Shopify multiple locations is. Um, this is a way to basically fulfill orders um, uh, from different locations uh, within your Shopify store, and we do support that. So um, this is gonna be in the upper right-hand corner uh, under our settings tab. And then on the left-hand side, um, we're gonna look at our ship from addresses first. As you can see, I've got a bunch of test ones in here, a bunch of different various locations, um, but I just wanna make sure that I map these locations correctly to my Shopify store for orders that are downloading. What can happen if you don't map your Shopify uh, ship from locations accurately is the store update will, um, it can fail. So basically when you ship an order from Shopify, we go back and let Shopify know, hey, this order has been fulfilled and we changed the status. However, if we're seeing a different ship from location than where the order was actually shipped from, then we'll get an error back and that's okay. We can always just update it and resend it, but that is an error you'll see and that order will be left um, to its original uh, uh, status. To adjust that, all you need to do is click on stores and orders on our settings page. We'll click on the Shopify logo. And then on the right-hand side, we'll use this notifications tab. It's at the very bottom here. As you can see, I have uh, two separate locations here. So I would just wanna make sure that I map any of these ship from addresses within Shipping Easy that will be uh, associated to these guys. So if it's if it's uh, Shipping Easy Austin, Texas, then we'll put Austin location. If it's actually Bob uh, Riveride, California, maybe that's the Saturn Drive location. But just make sure that those line up properly, save it, and you'll be good to go. Let's see. There's a good question about using Shopify with Shipping Easy. I would say um, of our 60,000 customers, at least, uh, at least a third of them probably use Shopify uh, as a platform. It's by far the most popular that I encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. So the question is, if you use the Shopify um, uh, shopping cart, do you use uh, Shipping Easy as the um, uh, like the, the application as your um, shipping tool, or do you use the back end of Shopify? You will log into Shipping Easy specifically to ship the packages. You would not say log into Shopify and there'd be, be like a Shipping Easy button for you to press and the label would come out. You're actually going to experience this UI uh, and process shipping labels here. The orders come from Shopify, but you will log into app.shippingeasy.com. Um, to uh, to process those orders, and then of course it goes back and, and updates Shopify with um with the tracking information and the order status after you processed it here. Good question. So there's a good question about um uh, the tracking email that I referred to, where as soon as I process one of these shipping labels and I click buy label, well then Alex Stevens um, at Shipping Easy. Uh, is going to get an email from us. This is automatically enabled in the software. So this is a good point to bring up. So one thing you want to try and avoid, and we'll use Shopify again as an example, Shopify sends out a confirmation email, but so does Shipping Easy. So I would just recommend uh, picking one or the other to send that out. Um, it's pretty much the same, I believe, in every single platform um, uh, for the most part. I believe WooCommerce, BigCommerce, um, I think eBay does as well. Amazon's a little different because they're very controlling on their correspondence. So we don't send out an email in that instance. But yeah, I'll show you exactly where you can adjust that. So we'll click on settings in the upper right hand corner. Go back to stores and orders. Any adjustment that you need to make to 
um, the way your orders are pulling into shipping easy or sending out tracking information, it's going to be the stores and orders uh, area. So we'll look at Shopify and again, notifications. As you can see, I have um, the confirmation email settings right here. This is currently checked in my Shipping Easy account to say send shipping confirmation to buyer with the tracking number. That means that Shipping Easy is going to send this email and that most likely I have disabled that within Shopify. Now, if I want Shopify to send it, no big deal. We can just uncheck it and then click on this button that says request that Shopify send the notification. You can do it either way. It's really up to the customer as far as their preferences. Um, but that's Shopify. I think, I don't know if I have WooCommerce. Someone was asking about that. I don't have WooCommerce in my test account. BigCommerce has it as well though, shipment confirmation. Um, and you can customize these emails too. There's a default that Shipping Easy has. Um, and we'll go take a look. It's in our settings. And it's under our email templates. And as you can see, I've got one for each of these guys, but I can come back in here anytime and make any sort of adjustment. Maybe I want to use um, a different salutation than hello or customer name. No big deal. We just come in here, update it, save the template, and we can send it out. It's a great question. So someone's asking about how to create um, a shipping preset. So it, that's a good question. A, a shipping preset and shipping easy is a combination of a carrier, a service, and a package choice. And these presets, we'll go back to the orders page now. These presets are the drop downs that you're able to ship from the orders page with. So as you can see, our carrier is the post office, our service is priority mail, and our packaging is just a generic packaging. I could put in the dimensions for anything. That's just a stock one. But you can have really specific presets. As I showed earlier, we have a US Postal Service priority mail seven by seven by seven package. Um, so that was a preset that I created. This FedEx home delivery small box that's going in a six by nine by two, that's a preset. It's just FedEx going with their home delivery service in a small box. So to create that, we're going to click on settings. Then we'll click on our shipping presets beneath our shipment settings here. Anything with a star next to it will appear on your orders page. Um, so if I don't want to use this Test Express shoe box any further, I can just go ahead and unstar it. It's still available, but it's no longer going to show up on my orders page. So we can click new preset right here. We'll do United States Postal Service, uh, Priority Mail Express again, and then we'll use this 11 by 13 by two box, create that preset. You can even rename it if you want. This is just the standard combination of the um, carrier, the service, and the packaging. We'll call this uh, Brad's Rad Preset 2020 Yellow and Create. That's going to be my go-to preset moving forward. I think every, um, uh, every other webinar we do, I'm always going to use that preset. You guys saw it first. Um, so yeah, if we come back here, uh, we can go ahead and find Brad's Rad preset right here. It's ready to go. We can switch it. And we can go ahead and purchase it. Let's see here. So this is a really good question going back to our um, uh, idea around um, stores that are either not compatible with integrating with Shipping Easy or that you, you don't have an online presence. You can still use our software to generate labels. Um, this person is asking uh, how to manually enter addresses and use an Excel spreadsheet. So the manual one's very straightforward. We're just clicking this quick ship button, new label, and then you're just literally going through and filling this out and you're creating the order. Um, so again, it's just Brad Pendleton. Here's all the information we'll need for him. This is an item that weighs uh, one pound. Create the order. And it shows up right here at the top. It's, it'll say manual store. Obviously, if you don't have a store plugged in, um, it's not going to say like Shopify if it's coming in from a manual order. That's just the quick manual order process. I'll show you how to do a CSV upload real quick too. Um, it's pretty straightforward. We just click upload orders. 
on the orders page. And then right here, we're gonna have to go find uh, that CSV that I've created. So we'll go with, um, let's see, I just used one. Where is it? Quick relevant order CSV, here we go. So now it's all ready. I've got my CSV um, uh, locked and loaded. We'll click upload. And now this is the most important part. You wanna make sure that you have all of the information on this CSV um, correct, because otherwise you'll have to do a lot of cleanup in the app. It's easier to do the cleanup in Excel than it is in the application. But then it's just a matter of mapping stuff. So we'll map our order number to our order number. Anything with a asterisk next to it is required. So we have to have an order number for the upload. We have to have an item name. We can just call that item name here. And again, these don't have to be specific. If you create an Excel spreadsheet uh, and column A is the order number, you could literally just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There just has to be a value there. And then same with item name. It doesn't have to be the actual item that you're shipping. You could just call it item name, or you could again just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whatever is easiest for you, whatever makes the most sense for you. Um, and then we'll go through and we'll map all this stuff. Typically, I recommend order number, item name, obviously they're required, but the weight's a good thing to have in there too if you have it. It just cuts down on steps once the stuff's in the um, application. We'll click first name, last name. A good thing to point out too, you don't need to put the full combined name here if you have both the first and last name. Um, so just make sure, again, you, you want to have as clean of data as possible when uploading a CSV to cut down on the amount of cleanup you'll do inside the actual application. We'll go ahead and add these guys. City, state, zip code. And then I always suggest to the email. Um, again, that's just for that tracking information. So as soon as you process these orders, it goes right to your customer. They know what's going on, they're all good. Skip address verification, that's the last point that you wanna check here. What that's going to do, we'll still be able to correct any addresses, we'll still flag them and say, hey, this address seems suspicious or it seems like it needs some work on it. We'll still take care of that, but for the sake of importing the CSV into Shipping Easy, we wanna make that as clean as possible. So we'll skip it in this part right here, but the software catches it after it's been downloaded. Now we've gone through and we're downloading and checking the file, it's ready to go. It's all good, let's go ahead and click ready. When we see these yellow highlighted orders, that just means there's errors and we need to fix them. Now this was a, a test CSV that I uploaded, so this information isn't filled out. So I'd expect that to see can't be blank. So I could just click on this and say, John, Johnson, and then uh, Mark, Marky, so basically you go through and fix these. It turns white after you've fixed it. Ideally, we would wanna see this complete upload be blue. And once you do that, all of those orders will be transitioned to the orders page. But um, if none of these can be fixed or maybe there's too many, I definitely recommend uh, trying to clean that up in Excel because otherwise you're going to go through one at a time here. It's just not conducive for mass edits within Shipping Easy. Three is not bad, but when you hit 300, that's obviously problematic. But yeah, that's that's it for a CSV upload. It's just, I, I can't stress it enough. Make sure the data is really uh, clean in Excel first, upload it, and they'll all appear here and you can get the processing. Well, we've run um, a little bit over. I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, the last thing I'll say in all of this is thank you for joining me uh, this afternoon. We're doing these every week. Um, we are going to start adjusting the, um, the times on them. Uh, I think we're going to Wednesday here uh, in the next couple of weeks. So keep your eyes peeled. Feel free to join and sign back up next week. We talk about different things uh, every single week. Um, I've never created a shipping preset called Bad Brads 2020. So you might get a better preset next week. I've never uploaded CSV on one of these. So there's always really good questions that people are asking, things that we haven't touched on before. So I'm happy to, uh, to go into detail if you think of something. The last thing too is give us a call or shoot us an email. Uh, if you're having any sort of issues, we'll be happy to talk to you over the phone. We've got chat, we've got email. We're very big on support because the, the software can do a million different things, but it is completely useless if you can't figure out how to do it. 
So definitely give us a call. We're happy to help. Um, and yeah, thank you again for joining me. And uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your Tuesday um, and everybody's staying safe.